merciful than me and you. God can forgive anything, right? We believe God doesn't need the payment. God doesn't need to kill someone for my sin. God... Sorry? Sorry, come again? Yeah, yes, yes. So in terms of repentance, there's, there is a verse in the Quran. That if you don't repent after committing sin, then God will demolish you and will send another, you know, uh, people, another group of people who will repent, who will commit sin, then they will repent. Another hadith says that all people are sinner, but the best of sinner emo among them, the best of the people are who? Who commit sin, then they repent. So yes, according to Islam, that we all commit sin. According to Islam, we all commit sin, and we are the people, we are by ourselves, we, me, myself, is accountable for my sin. And my father is not accountable for my sin, because he has his own life, I have my own life. If my ma father, yeah, exactly. So we don't believe that the God is not merciful. We believe God is merciful and God doesn't need blood. God doesn't need sacrifice. God doesn't need anything. Like if I, if you, if you, if I take 10 pounds and you can forgive without any condition. So God is most merciful than me and you, right? We believe God is merciful. He doesn't need the payment. He doesn't need any sacrifice to forgive ourselves. What we can do, we can make the repentance and he will repent. He will, he will forgive us. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah. So, and no, same in Christianity is now. If you go to the doctrine of atonement, yeah, it says that nobody is. By the way, do you believe a newborn baby is sinner? No. According to the Christian doctrine, a newborn baby is sinner because of what? Because of the original sin. Yeah, but as sinner as well. If you say is he sinner, the direct answer is yes. Because according to the atonement. According to the original sin, doctrine of if you read the doctrine of original sin, it says that the Adam and Eve eat the you know a fruit in, in in heaven. So for that for that time, every human being comes from the Adam and Eve is a sinner, born as a sinner. That's the doctrine of atonement and that's the doctrine of uh, original sin. But we don't believe that. We don't believe that say, if I commit a sin and it will go to the, my all progeny. We don't believe that. We believe if I commit any sin, it's done with me. I will be accountable for that, yeah? But there's the difference between the Islam and the Christianity. Christianity doesn't accept that's the, okay, if you commit sin, you will be the accountable and you will get the either reward for the things you do, good deeds you do, or the punishment for the bad deeds you do. Christianity doesn't believe at all. Christianity, according to the Christian doctrine, if you believe in Jesus, he died for your sin, and no matter whatever you do, you will be in paradise. We don't believe that. We believe everyone is responsible for their sin. Everyone is responsible for their good deeds, and their bad deeds as well. Allah said in the Quran, There's the God created death and the life to test the who do the quality good deeds. You see? So Allah said very specifically that's what He wants from us. You see? So, what do you think? Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah, Allah said in the Quran, very excellent point you made. Allah said in the Quran, the وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضُعِيفًا Allah said that I made the human being, yeah, as weak. They are very weak. Allah knows it. Allah knows it. It's the He made the creation, the human being. وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضُعِيفًا إِنسَانُ means the human. So, ضُعِيفًا means the weak. So we know and Allah knows he make the people as weak and what's the reward he will give this if within your weakness you you are weak but still you are repenting for your sin still you are gratitude showing gratitude towards me still you are acknowledging me still you are saying that there is one God who created me who created everything then Allah will forgive and Allah will give you the ultimate you know enjoyment after the death hereafter yeah and that's the Islamic belief of this world and hereafter. And we believe that the, if we sacrifice something, I mean the sacrifice of our time, obviously five times prayer is sacrificing time, sacrificing managing your all the stuff. Yeah, and Allah, what Allah said is that 
in the salat that tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. That's the if anyone prayed the five times, what Allah said tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Allah will, you know, restrict him. Allah will protect him from the what? Tanha anil fahshai wal munkar means the bad deeds and the, you know, adultery, all of the things, all of the commit, uh, sin people can commit, you know. And Allah said in the Quran as well, that's the, the good deeds will be multiplied. As we are weak, we cannot do many things. Allah, Allah said in the hadith said, this, every good deed will be multiplied 10 times. And Prophet Muhammad said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that, he said that, الحرف الحرف if, I, if anyone read Alif, Lam, Mim, that's three letter in the Quran, he says they will be, it will be multiplied 10 times, meaning three into 10, 30, right? So he will get the 30 reward from Allah. You see, because we are the people who are weak, and Allah is one who is merciful. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point. Allah, in this point, in these things, in this term, Allah doesn't need the prayer. Allah doesn't need our prayer. It's not the reward. Why we are getting reward? This we are being gratitude towards Allah. You see, that's the reason we're getting you. Allah doesn't need it because if you don't recognize Allah, Allah's, nothing will happen to the Creator. Yeah, He's the Creator still. So we repent, we show the gratitude for ourselves. Yeah. For ourselves, that's that we are gratitude. If I say today that I don't care my mom, about my mother, it will be, you know, so much ungrateful, right? I'll be ungrateful. So when I'm saying that I believe in Allah and I'm praying to Him and I'm giving my time, the, all the things, for the Allah, it means this that I become gratitude towards Allah. You see, that's the belief of Muslim. And we believe this Allah sent the guidance. We believe Prophet Moses, Jesus, Abraham, Ishmael, all of them were the true messenger. Yeah. And we believe Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and the final messengers as well. Yeah. So, does it make sense to you? What do you think about Prophet Muhammad? Sorry. It's a good system. Sorry? Did you say what do I think about the world? Prophet Muhammad Sussman. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, yeah. Yeah, I think it's good because a lot of most of the people I know who believe who are Islamic and peaceful and caring and honest people. So it makes me think that it's a good way of living. Okay. But in the same sense, I know I'm weak, like you said, that I'm trying to, I wouldn't want to do it unright, like, I don't want to be saying that I'm this and I'm not, you know, that's why I've ah, read, I understand. read some of the Quran. I understand your point. Um, yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. Does it make sense that Prophet Muhammad was a messenger and he is the last and the final messenger? Does it make sense to you? It does, yeah. Yeah. So, for example, then, do you have any question regarding Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Not really, although I just, obviously I'd need to know more about Okay, him. yeah, let me tell you something about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. First of all, how do you know he's a prophet? That's the question, right? Because for claiming something, there has to be evidence. There has to be ultimate truth, testimonial truth, yeah? How do you know that? We can know from his teaching and from his message. For example, if someone came with a jacket called Adidas, yeah, and he's selling the product of Adidas in Whitechapel area, and he's giving the leaflet of Adidas. So three days later, another man come and has same jacket called Adidas, same books, same literature, same things he's selling. What's the conclusion we can make? Yes, they both came from the same company, correct? If you look at the teachings of the, all the previous prophets, the prophet Moses, Jesus, Abraham, David, Jacob, Ishmael, Noah, all of them, what they said? All people pray to one true God, worship one true God. What prophet Moses said, worship to one true God. What Abraham said, worship to one true God. What Ishmael said, worship to one true God. What prophet Jesus said, worship to one true God. What prophet Muhammad Islam said? said Ashhadu an la ilaha la ilaha illallah meaning there is no god except Allah and worship to one Allah one creator you see the connection but prophet muhammad never met any other prophet you see so they never met 
but they are giving the same message. What's the conclusion you can make? Yes, they came from same source, meaning the same God. Yeah. Secondly, how do you know he's a true prophet? All prophets came with message and the wahi and the miracle. Yeah. So miracle means this uh, messengers came with wahi and the books. Yeah. And prophet came with you know to spread the message of messengers. So all messengers came with a miracle which called mu'jiza in the Islamic term. Yeah, mu'jiza means the miracle which can prove that he's a prophet. So the biggest miracle of the Prophet Muhammad Islam was the Quran. How do you know the Quran is the biggest miracle? Yeah, there's a question. So Quran says, in the Quran Allah said, Quran is the word of God, it, it wasn't written by anyone. By the way, Prophet Muhammad Islam was unlettered. He didn't know how to write, how to read. So it's impossible for a man to write something like this, right? First of all, it's a first miracle. Secondly, sorry, what? Yeah, it's the historical truth. If you read the history, even the non-Muslim scholar, they both all the historian agreed that the Prophet Muhammad Islam didn't know how to read or how to write. You see, the next point is that the, it's impossible for a for a man who doesn't know how to read, how to write, never goes to any school, any any university writing something which is talking about the present, past, future and the many things, scientific, embryology, these or that. Next point, Quran says, if you don't believe this Quran comes from God, create something like it. Quran gives a challenge, you see? And this challenge was very risky. Why? Because in that time, Muslim was very minority people, maybe thousands or for example, ten thousands. And in that time, Quran gave this challenge, if you don't believe this Quran comes from God, create something like it, even create a chapter like it. So in that time, it was very risky because in that time, the people of Arab was the very, very special in their language. Even if you go to the Arab country today, in, the, in this world, if you go to Arab country, you'll find that all, the, all their you know, historic books, which is, you know, so highest rank, in their history, in, in terms of literacy, in terms of their linguistic things, it's written in that time. Meaning in, the, in that time, they, they literally remembered thousands of lines of poems. There was many poets. And in that time, Allah said, if you don't believe this Quran comes from God, create something like it, even a chapter. Then they were laughing and saying, okay, this is the right time. We can prove Prophet Muhammad is the first prophet, all right? Then all of the tribe, came together all of the poem poets or whatever they are writer came together and they didn't able to write a single chapter like the quran and they came to, came to a conclusion that it's not from the god so that's the first miracle what quran gave a challenge and the miracle both secondly quran talks about many future things and present past and the future quran talks about in that time, the Roman Empire was the biggest empire in the world. They were the so strong. So in Quran, talk something about the Quran, tell something about the Quran, which is quite shocking. Quran said, this Roman Empire will be defeated by Persian. It's quite shocking. And the, all the munafiqun who doesn't believe in Prophet Muhammad and the, you know, all the non-believers, they were laughing at the Quran and they're saying, that's the right time, you can say Prophet is false because look, it doesn't make sense to say if someone says, okay, Uganda will invade USA. It doesn't make sense that all people will laugh that what you're talking about. Like the Persians was the very minority, they didn't have any strength in that time. And the Quran said very soon, Persians will invade the uh, uh, Rome Empire. And in that time, the people was laughing. And within a few years, what happened? Roman Empire was invaded by the Persians. So how a man who, who doesn't know the history, never read the history, knows this that it will happen, make, make a prediction. And amazingly, Quran said in the, in the following verse, Quran said, Rome, Roman Empire, they will invade Persians again within nine years. Yes. It says in the Surah to Rum, there is a chapter about the Roman the Roman Empire and other. So it says they will be, they will invade Persians again. Roman will invade Persians again within nine years, and it was exactly happened according to the all history. 
you see? So how a unlettered person who never read the history, even read the history, he cannot make it, make this prediction, yeah, without knowing from the God. And if you go to the Quran, Quran talks about many science, for example, embryological science. We got the science, modern embryology came in 1985, 19, from 1960 to 1985. In this, in this portion of time, modern embryology was developed. The embryology means how a fetus developed in mother's womb. That's the embryology, yeah? Uh, science of medical science, yeah? Right. It's the medical, yeah, embryology. So it talks about how fetus grows, how it's developed. We know this in 1985 or 1975, meaning 60 to 85 in this, uh, in this uh, 35 years. We understand and we, we got the ultimate result how fetus works and how fetus develop, become, become a baby, how myosis cell divi division does work. And then what's the other steps? We know this from onward. But amazingly, Quran talks, ab talks about exactly this in 1500 years ago. Quran said, Nutfa, Mudra, all the stages, Quran was speaking all the, about the, all the stages. So nobody knows before just 50 years ago. Nobody knows about this. That's the how a fetus work. Nobody at all, even not science. Science just, we, we just introduced about it. Quran talks about the, and the point is how this Quran, and it all the conclusion if you made, that's that it's impossible for a man to say about the oceanography, to say something about the embryology, who never studied medicine, Quran talks about the, how universe was. Quran talks about the orbit of a sun. So we don't. We found the orbit of a sun 60 years ago. Just Quran talks about washams tajrili mustaqar liha zalik taqdiru alazizil alim. There's a sun has its own orbit and its surrounding. So Quran talks about the embryology. So it's impossible for an unlettered person to know without getting message from the God. You see, and the Quran confirms such. Con make a confirmation that's the prophet muhammad islam is the last and the final messengers and we never found any contradiction in the quran nobody found at all unlike the bible we found many uh, yeah i'm gonna I'm yeah gonna go I'm gonna miss my no problem I appreciate yeah so how does it make sense there's the prophet muhammad is the last and final so you know if it does make sense to you that the islam is you know allah is one god is one and prophet muhammad is the last and the final messenger you're muslim I Take shahada. Uh, I did. I did. Many times when I speak with people like this, I take Did you take shahada before? No, no. Taking shahada is something you are affirming your belief, that you believe in it, and then you will act upon it. Yeah? Then you will act upon it, like the praying five times and all the stuff. Does it make sense? Yeah. Do you know? said that's why I didn't feel that. I was going to be a good Muslim. Because... Yeah, so, you know, good Muslim, it depends on, as I said, uh, Allah loves repenters who commit sin, then repent. Yeah, Allah's door is always open. So even if I say, yeah, God, I'm praying, how do I pray to Allah? Yeah, okay, that, that's a good point. So there is a structure of prayer, right? We pray like, uh, in there is many kinds of prayers. First of all, we pray five times. Then if you say, Ya Allah, forgive me, there's another kind of prayer. If you do the fasting, everything is prayer. Allah said, Allah made the human being and jinn only for worship. Worship means if you do the, if you, for example, if you're talking nicely with your mother and your child, it is a prayer. It is a, you know, worship of Allah as well. That's the, it is a, all the halal things and, you know, which is, Promotable, which is permissible in Islam, is the is the worship of Allah, and obviously specifically, this the salah, five time prayer, is the ritual prayer in Islam. Yeah, and this prayer will make connection to the Creator. We don't we don't make any you know middleman you know in our faith. We say. How do you? Yeah, no, there is a structure of the prayer because, for example, we pray. Uh, it's called salah. Yeah, salah means the prayer. So we pray five times. So how to pray? There's I can. What you can do if you take shahada? Yeah, inshallah. And there is a structure how to pray. So I can give you the number of sisters. They took every Saturday. They took a lesson. They take lesson for new Muslim who become new Muslim. 
So they will. Where is it down here? Yeah, yeah, it's it's just in Eastern Mosque. Yeah. So or I can give you their number so you can contact. So they will assign to you with uh, some local sister if you want. Yeah. Inshallah, you wanna take shahada? I think take shahada with affirmation that inshallah will practice it. Yeah. Yeah. But you are not affirm. It didn't affirm it. This the you know the shahada. What's the iman means? Iman, iman has three layers. Yeah. One is testifying. Another one is believing from your heart and another one is act upon it that's called iman yeah so when you testify then from your not from your lips from your heart then act upon it that's the islam yeah so took shahada now by the old sincerity and then inshallah that by the will of allah act upon it yeah okay so how do you pray you know, no. I'm saying, how do you pray? Because you pray to God. As I said, that if I say, Ya Allah, forgive me, that's a one kind of prayer. But Islam is a structural prayer, right? There's a five times, this, this, at particular time, and how to pray. As I said, that I, I think it, it's better for you if you go to the, if you go to sisters, yeah, then they will teach you how to, you know, how to do the salah. There's a, obviously, there's a structure of prayer. Shahada. Okay. Say, Ashhadu. Allah. Ilaha illa Allah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. I bear witness there is no God except Allah and Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and the final messenger of Allah. You see, Alhamdulillah, that's that you just testify your belief from lips and hearts. Yeah. Then what do you need to do? You need to act upon it. You see, there is a pillars of Islam. First of all, you need to know how to do the prayer. Then, then step by step, step by step, the prayer, salah, you know, the fasting in Ramadan, all of the things will come together, inshallah. So I can give you a sister's number. Just contact with her. She will help you, inshallah. Uh, yeah, I think they will. They can arrange some sisters there. What's her name? Uh, Fatima. Yeah, you can you can save it and just ring her or message her in WhatsApp. Then she will respond to you. Inshallah. All right, no problem at all. Yeah, take care of yourself. Uh, my name is Nazmul. Yeah, no problem. Take care of yourself. Bye.